People's 54 sub 2, Your Honor. All right. You described in your note, sir, item number 17, the ski mask. Um, based on your observation at that time, was that, let me ask you this, had you gone up to and lift and held it and looked at it when you wrote that note, sir? No, I did not. What kind of observation did you have of the object you were describing at the time you wrote that note, item 17? Well, it, it appeared to be uh, what I usually uh, describe as a, a ski pa ski cap or a ski mask, and it looked dull uh, cloth, and that's what I concluded it could possibly be. And the glove was fairly obvious that it appeared to be a leather-type glove. So at the point that you wrote that note, you had not walked up into the crime scene uh, and stepped up to the bush to look at it? No, I hadn't. The photograph that we showed you yesterday of you pointing to the items underneath that bush, when was that taken, sir? I believe that was somewhere around between 7 and 7.15 that morning. And at that point, sir, had you already been to Rockingham and come back to Bundy? Yes, ma'am. All right. After Detective Lang and Detective Van Adder had that conversation, what happened next? Thereabouts, sometime, uh, Detective Van Adder told Detective Phillips and myself to go back to Bundy to uh, look at that glove that we had seen on Bundy. And for what purpose, sir? To see if there was a, a similarity, if we had a, uh, a right and a left, see if the uh, color and the, the leather uh, and the lining matched. And so uh, after Detective Van Adder asked you to do that, did you? Yes, Detective Phillips and I left the uh, Rockingham scene and went back to Bundy. In the same car you guys came in earlier? Yes. You drove together, did you? Yes. And what time was it when you went back to Bundy? I believe about uh, 7 in the morning, maybe a little later. Again, were you looking at your watch when you left uh, Rockingham to go back to Bundy? No, I wasn't. Is that an approximation, sir? Yes. And when you went back to Bundy, what did you do? Detective Phillips uh, instructed me to uh, get a photographer. I did. We uh, walked down Dorothy, entered the alley, and came in through the rear of the residence. We will be shortly. All right, sir. When Detective Phillips asked you to go and get a photographer, did you do that? Yes, I did. And what was the purpose of that? To photograph the uh, glove in its original position, and if I needed to move it to inspect it any further, we could, uh, in other words, photo it as we originally found it. And who is this in the photograph, sir? That is uh, victim Brown and myself. And are you pointing to something underneath that bush? Yes, I am. And what is that? It's the glove on Bundy. And is that the photograph that uh, you took the photographer over to take at the direction of Detectives Van Adder and Phillips? Yes. You, and you um, are you dressed here? You recall um, testifying earlier that uh, you'd taken your jacket off uh, at some point when you were at Bundy earlier? Yes. Had you ever put it on again between that point and this point here? No, I had not. So at the time that you found the glove at Rockingham, what were you wearing? I was wearing exactly what's in this photo, a white shirt, tan slacks. Uh, Do you loafers. still have that? I'm sorry? <laughs> loafers. Loafers? Loafers. Shoes. Shoes. And were you... Do you still have those clothing, that clothing, sir? Yes, I do. The shirt and the pants? Yes. And so you're still, are you still dressed uh, in the same manner in this photograph being shown to the jury now as you were when you found the glove at Rockingham? Yes. After that photograph was taken, sir, 
What happened next? I returned to uh, the Rockingham address. And for what purpose did you return to the Rockingham address? To um, inform the detectives what I saw at Bundy. Now, before you left uh, for Rockingham again, when you went over to the glove on Bundy, sir, uh, what did you do? You were, you were asked, I think you testified earlier, to compare it to the one at Rockingham to determine whether it would look the same? Yes. And a match? Yes. What did you do in order to make sure of that? Well, I had to determine if it was a right or a left, and I did. It was a left-handed glove. At Bundy? Yes. It appeared to be the same uh, texture of leather, same color. Mm -hmm. The uh, fabric, a, a mesh fabric, was the uh, lining inside. It appeared to be the same uh, texture, design, and color as the glove on Rockingham. Did you touch the glove? No. Did you move it? Yes. How'd you do that? Uh, with a pen. With a pen, like the kind you write with? Yes. Okay. Did you have the ink part out? No. And how, what did you do that for? I just lifted it and turned it so I could tell if it was a right or a left and to look at the lining. Okay. And was there someone else present when you did that? Yes. Who? Uh, the photographer. I believe he was Mr. Rokar. Okay. Next witness. Rolf Rokar. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Robertson. I do. Please have a seat on the witness stand. The statement's clear. First and last names for the record. My last name is Rokar, R-O-K-A-H-R. -R. First name is Rolf, R-O-L-F. Middle initial D. Mr. Newfield. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And good afternoon, Mr. Rokar. Good afternoon, Mr. Neufeld. Mr. Rokar, would you please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you do for a living? Uh, I'm a photographer for the city of Los Angeles assigned to the police department. And uh, how long have you been working as a photographer for the Los Angeles Police Department? Uh, as a civilian employee, almost 10 years. It's nine years and two months. And I've worked as a reserve officer since 19... 80 or 81, up until 86. I'm still working as a reserve officer. Mr. Right, Rokar, Mr. if you could try to keep your voice up, please. All right, Mr. Yes. Robertson, just give me a little more volume on that. Here's some more juice. <clears throat> Mr. Rokar, would you please tell the jury what it is you do uh, for the Los Angeles Police Department, what your, your job title is and, and what that entails, sir? The yeah, job title is uh, photographer two, and uh, I photograph primarily homicide scenes. At this point, I work from 10 o'clock at night till 5.30 in the morning, and uh, that's my, my main job. Okay. Well, you didn't work 10 o'clock to 5 a.m. last night, did you, sir? No, sir, I didn't. Okay. And... Um, <clears throat> When you say you go out to photograph uh, homicide scenes for the Los Angeles Police Department, um, do you go out there with equipment? I carry equipment in a police car. It's an unmarked car. And I have um, cameras, film, tripod, everything a photographer would need. And what happens to the film after you shoot the photograph, sir? When I return to the office after working usually all night, up until the morning, I turn the film in to be processed. If there's nobody there to do it, I do it myself. I do it develop, developing myself. Does that developing occur at the Los Angeles Police Department? Yes, sir. Is that it's, at Parker Center? It's at Parker Center on the fourth floor. And by, by the way, sir, um, did you meet me for the first time yesterday at Parker Center? I believe it was first time, yeah. Okay. Well, you have no recollection of ever talking to me before, do you, sir? No, I don't. 
And when we met yesterday at Parker Center, um, it was to interview you in connection with this case. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. And who else was present for this interview that I had with you at Parker Center? Uh, I don't know who the gentleman is that you brought, but um, it was Dave Atkins that was present with us, I think. And who is David Atkins? David Atkins is uh, my OIC, which stands for Officer in Charge of the Photo Lab. Uh, who also works for the Los Angeles Police Department, correct? Yes, sir. And was there also a Deputy District Attorney present for this uh, interview? Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Oh, well, even if you don't remember his name, was somebody from the District Attorney's Office present? Yes, uh, Mr. Jokerson. Okay. Now, I'd like to call your attention to the early morning hours of June 13th, 1994. Were you the Los Angeles Police Department photographer assigned to go to 875 Bundy in connection with a double homicide? That is correct. And approximately what time did you arrive at that location? We received a call at uh, 0248, and uh, I probably arrived around 0320. Sir, did you have an opportunity to um, review the logs of Bundy um, to, well, I'm sorry, withdrawn. When you first arrived at 875 Bundy, did you immediately go see the login police officer? Uh, I could not find him where I had parked. And where was that that you had parked? I parked right on the very corner of, is it, I believe it's Dorothy and Bundy. And uh, I had to walk in back of the the actual location to find someone who had the log. And when you found someone who had the log, they logged you in, so to they speak? Would, they logged me in, yes, sir. Okay. And have you at any time reviewed that log prior to your testifying today? I have never seen that log. When you spoke with me yesterday, did you tell me that the time that you had arrived at 875 Bundy was approximately 310 in the morning? Um, could be 310, could be 320, I'm not sure. Okay. And when you arrived, sir, um, how many cameras did you use to photograph uh, the scene at 875 Bundy? Just one camera. And um, what kind of film did you use? We used uh, 200 ASA Kodak. Is that color film? Kodak, gold, yeah, gold color film. And it's color print film? Color print film. And... Um, as soon as you signed in or logged in uh, at the rear of the house, um, were you then given a walkthrough through the scene? I was given a walkthrough by a police officer. And would that be a uniformed police officer who gave you that walkthrough? A uniformed police officer. And approximately how long did that walkthrough take, sir? Probably no more than five minutes. Okay. So if you had arrived at approximately 310, would that mean that the walkthrough ended at about 315? Sustain. Rephrase the question. If you arrived at 3:20 in the morning, and you logged in, I'm sorry. If you logged in at 3:20 in the morning, um, and the walkthrough took approximately five minutes, would that mean that the walkthrough was over by 3:25? I would say so. Okay. <clears throat> and as soon as the walkthrough was over, um, did you encounter Detective Phillips? Sustain. <laughs> As soon as the walkthrough was over, did you, count, did you encounter a detective? No. Oh, well. Excuse me? No, I did not. After you completed the walkthrough that took approximately five minutes, what is the next thing that happened? I shot the overalls of um, the streets involved. Right. So what we do is we shoot um, up and down the street. Uh, the intersection, and um, I believe I shot pictures. Can I refer to some of my notes here? Yes. All right, Mr. Rokar, it appears you brought a notebook with, are these all the photographs that you took on that day? These are all the photographs I took. All right, proceed. Mr. Rokar, um, you said that beginning then at about 325, after you had the, uh, the walkthrough through the scene, you began to shoot overalls, okay? That is correct. 
When you say overalls, is that is another word for that establishment shots? Um, location shots. Okay, and are those shots, the purpose of those shots, to give one an overall impression of the street scene? The street scene and uh, possible escape routes that the detectives might want to see if a witness should become available. And so would those be a series of photographs taken um, both in front of 875 Bundy and also behind 875 Bundy in the alleyway? And up and down the streets. Okay. And sir, approximately how long did it take you to shoot those overall or establishment or location shots that you just described? Oh. You can answer the question. I would say approximately 25, 35 minutes. Okay. So if you began taking these overall or location shots at approximately 325 in the morning and they took approximately 25 minutes to shoot, that would mean that you were finished shooting these location shots at approximately uh, 3.50 or 3.55 in the morning. Would that be a fair estimate? Something like that. And sir, immediately after you completed shooting the overalls, did you then speak to a detective? Sustain, rephrase the question. Well, what was the next thing that happened after you completed shooting these location shots, sir? I believe at that point uh, I met up with Mark Furman, Detective Mark Furman. Right. And um, about how many minutes after you finished shooting these overalls, location shots, was it that you met up with Detective Mark Furman? It's difficult to see at that time. It meant nothing to me. The difference in time, so I would say it could be um, an hour. Sir? I'm just guessing at this point. Sir, when you were interviewed by me yesterday, do you recall that I asked you at the beginning of the interview whether it was all right for me to tape record the interview? Yes. And you recall saying that it was fine with you? No problem. And. During that interview, do you recall saying that it was approximately five? Yeah, <laughs> Proceed. When you were interviewed by me yesterday on tape at the Los Angeles Police Department Parker Center, didn't you say to me that it was approximately five to 10 minutes after you completed the overall shots of the scene that you encountered Detective Mark Furman? I may have said that to you. I didn't realize I stayed by my car for a while. Sir, did you have a conversation with any member of the district attorney's office or the police department after we finished our interview yesterday about no. the facts concerning this case? No, sir. Did you have any discussion with any member of the district attorney's office or the police department today about this case and your involvement before you took the witness stand? No, sir. I looked at my, um, my paperwork, at my logs. Sir. During the lunch break, did you speak to Assistant District Attorney Christopher Darden about your involvement in this case? Deputy District Attorney. Excuse me, Deputy District Attorney Christopher Darden about your involvement in this case. I don't know whether that was. We spoke, but I don't know whether that was during the lunch period. Mr. Newfield, 2.30. One second. Sir, are you admitting that yesterday morning when I interviewed you at the police department headquarters at Parker Center that you said to me that you met up with Mark Furman approximately five or 10 minutes after completing the overall photographs or at about 4.10 in the morning or so. 
Do you recall saying that to me yesterday on tape? Yes, I do. Okay. And when you met up with Mark Furman at approximately 4.10 in the morning, sir, did Mark Furman take you on another walk through through the scene? That is correct. It is. It's leading. All right. Council. When you met up with Mark Furman at about 4.10 in the morning, what did Mark Furman do with you, sir? No oh. objection. What happened? Mr. Rokar, what happened when you met with Detective Furman? Detective Furman um, asked me to come around, uh, I believe it's Dorothy Street, to the back of the house to show me what we have as far as a crime scene is concerned and uh, as far as uh, evidence is concerned. And at that time, when he took you through, did he ask you to take a few pictures of something in particular? By the time we arrived to the actual crime scene, he uh, first of all pointed out the bodies were obvious, whereas uh, some evidence, and uh, he asked me to photograph it. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah, and... Um, he, I asked him to actually point out where the evidence is because it was rather dark uh, in the green foliage there. Now, sir, if, as you indicated yesterday during the interview, that you first encountered Mark Furman at 4.10 a.m., how long did it take you to walk with Mark Furman to the location where these items of evidence were in the green foliage, approximately? I really don't want to narrow myself down on that because I'm not sure. Well, when I'm, I'm not asking you for a specific, whether it's four minutes or seven minutes, sir. I'm just asking you, would it be fair to say, for instance, that it's less than 15 minutes from the time that Mr. Furman encountered you and the time you got to those items of evidence which are in the green foliage? Objection, Your Honor. This is leading. Would that be a fair estimate of time? Could be 15 minutes, could be 20 minutes. Okay. 30, I'm not sure. Would it be a fair estimate that it was something between 15 minutes and 30 minutes? I think it's a fair estimate. All right. So, sir, if as you told me yesterday that it was approximately 4.10 in the morning when you encountered Mr. Furman at 875 Bundy, at the time that he was having you take pictures, of items of evidence that were in and about the green foliage, would that be sometime between 4.25 in the morning and 4.40 in the morning, based on your estimate, sir? I would say it's fair. Okay. <clears throat> and the couple of pictures that Detective Furman instructed you to take at that point, sir, were they pictures of Mr. Furman pointing at the glove? Sustain. Did Mr. Furman, I'm sorry, did Detective Furman instruct you to take any pictures of him pointing at objects of evidence? No, he didn't. I requested him to point to the evidence. Okay. And was the evidence that you requested him to point to the glove and the hat? That is correct. And that would be the glove and the hat at Bundy, is that correct? That is correct. And did you at that moment take pictures of Detective Furman pointing at the glove and the hat? Yes, I did. And sir, was one of the reasons that you asked Detective Furman to point to the item is because it was nighttime and thus the glove was difficult to see? That is correct. Oh. I'm sorry, what was your answer, sir? That is correct. Now, sir, after taking those couple of pictures, pictures of the um, glove and the hat. I think we're, we're assuming the number of photographs. Okay. Point. Do you know approximately how many photographs you took of Detective Furman um, pointing at items of evidence in near, near the green foliage that night? I believe only those two. After taking those two photographs that you just described, sir, 
did you then begin to take, did you at some point after that take other pictures of the scene? May I? And the records reflect that Mr. Rokar is referring again to his notebook of uh, photographs. show two photographs and these are in sequence of Detective Furman pointing to the items in the foliage. Okay, and after you took those two photos, at some time after you took those two photos, did you begin to take other photographs of the scene at 875 Bundy? That is correct. And in the next several photographs that you took, after you took photographs of Detective Furman pointing at the glove, for those next several photographs, were you being instructed by a police officer to take photographs, or were you simply using your own professional judgment and taking them alone? Some were my own choices, and some were, there were no police officers instructing me. It would have been Mark Furman. Well, sir, in the pictures that you took immediately after the glove, the first, let's say, five photographs, well, I'm sorry, withdrawn as to immediate, the next, May I come approach the witness for one second? You may. <laughs> Sir, for instance, sequentially, the next five photographs that you took after you took a pictures of Mark Furman pointing at the glove, for those five pictures, were you relying on your own professional judgment, or were you being instructed by a detective or police officer to take those pictures? Uh, at that point, I believe Mark Furman said, let's go around the front of the, the building and uh, shoot from there. Sir, when you were interviewed by me yesterday, didn't you tell me that as to the next group of five photographs that you took after Mark Furman, pointed out the glove, that as the next five photographs, they were not taken at the direction of any detective or police officer, but they were pictures that you simply took using your own professional judgment. Didn't you say that to me yesterday? I probably did, meaning, meaning that I do shoot a lot of photographs in my own judgment. The reason I'm saying now that Mark Furman instructed me to go around the front is because I switched from the actual crime scene, and we had to walk all the way around front to do these photographs. And uh, I think I was instructed. Sir, what ha when yesterday when I interviewed you, you said that for these next five photographs, you were not instructed. Isn't that correct? Objection, yes, and yes. Oh, you can answer the question. I really don't remember what I told you last night or yesterday afternoon. All right, one, one moment. Listen to this portion of the tape, sir, of the conversation of the interview of yesterday and tell me whether or not you did say during the interview yesterday that as the next five photographs, after the photographs of, of Detective Furman pointing at the glove, that for those you were not instructed by any police officer or detective, but instead were using your own professional judgment. I'm going to object. I'd like an opportunity to hear this if it's going to be played by the jury or anything it, else. Sustain. Here yeah, we approach, Your Honor. No. It was, it was provided in discovery, Your Honor. Sustained. You said it was a tape recording from yesterday that you made. All right. They have a copy. You gave them a copy? I gave them a copy. Right. They received a copy this morning, as soon right. as I received it. I have a request from the jury for a break. All right. Let's take our recess at this okay. point. All right. All right. Back on the record in the uh, Simpson matter, all parties are again present. Jury is not present. Mr. Uh, Darden, Mr. Newfield, have you resolved your uh, concerns regarding the tape? I'm sorry, we're missing a court reporter. Court reporter.
All right, we're back on the record. All parties are again present. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Darden, Mr. <coughs> Newfeld, you resolve your concerns regarding the tape. I, I don't think Mr. Darden has any objection now with me playing that portion of the tape. I think that uh, it should be made clear on the record that uh, the tape was made yesterday, and the first thing this morning before we commence court proceedings, a copy of the tape was given to Alan Yokelson, um, and it's that tape which I'll be playing. All right, the problem is, for the record, it's the standing rule of this court, and by this court I mean the Superior Court, that court reporters are not required to attempt to transcribe what is on tape recording. So, Mr. Newfeld, what I'm going to direct you to do is tomorrow morning file with the court a transcript of the portion of the tape that you're going to play Very for well, the record. Sir. All right, so that the record is complete. Okay. And All so, right, anything else? Yeah, and so the record is clear. I have no objection to this small excerpt, but as for others, and it is true that counsel gave us a copy of the tape this morning, but as the court is aware, I have been here uh, before the court. Uh, I understand that. All right. And you've queued up the snippet and showed it and... Uh, no, I haven't played the snippet right now for Mr. Dog, which I can certainly do. All right, Mr. Harris, you have that queued up? All right, let's just make sure we're all talking about the same snippet here. How long is the tape in its entirety? Well, this snippet is, is about eight lines. How long is the, the tape in its entirety? Probably an hour. Maybe a little more than an hour. Maybe an hour and 20 minutes. Okay. Let's hear the snippet, Mr. Harris. says I'm using my, my own judgment. All right. Cue it back up. Let's have the jury, please. All right, Mr. Rokar, would you resume the witness stand, please? All right, the record should reflect we've been rejoined all by, by all the members of our jury panel, and Mr. Newfeld, you may continue. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Rokar, when Detective Furman initially approached you, uh, was he alone at that point? Yes, he was. And uh, were you alone at that point? I was, too. And, by the way, did you know Detective Mark Furman prior to June 13, 1994? Yes, I did. For approximately how many years did you know Detective Mark Furman? I would have to guess. I would say maybe five years. Okay. And, um, and in what capacity did you know Detective Mark Furman? From working homicide scenes with him. In other words, there were scenes where he was the, the detective and you were simply the, um, I don't mean simply, sir. It's and okay. you were the, uh, the Los Angeles Police Department official photographer for the uh, crime scene? That's correct. Okay. And approximately how many crime scenes did you work with Detective Furman over those five years? I would have to estimate, but I would say 12, 15. Now, um, going back to the, uh, the questions I was asking you just before the break, sir, when you take these pictures, is there, a, um, is there a way that you can determine what the sequence of each picture is? Well, each of our photographers have a set way of taking photographs. Um, when you 
mentioned to me whether he instructed me on taking certain photographs. On the evidence, yes, he did. Sir, I'm asking you, Your Honor, I, I would ask that you ask the witness to be responsive. I'm simply asking, is there a, is there a method, a technical method, that you can determine a, the sequence in which photographs are taken? Yes, there is. Okay. And does each camera come with a counter on it? There's a counter on each, on most of the cameras we use. Well, does your camera have a counter, yes, sir? Yes, it does. And the, count, the camera you used that, that night at Bundy, did it have a counter? Yes, sir. And could you please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how that works? When we arrive at a crime scene, there is a data back on the back of my camera. And I can sit, uh, as far as the counter is concerned, six numbers, zero, 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 zero. From then on, it'll count up every shot that is taken. It adds a number, a digit to it. So in other words, the first one will be zero, 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 one? Uh, that would be my slate that I photograph. Okay. Now, in this particular instance, can you, by looking in your book, tell us what the numbers were in sequence of the two photographs you took of Detective Mark Furman pointing at the glove? Yes, I could. Could you please do so? That would be 34 and 35. That means that those are the 34th and 35th pictures that you took at Bundy that night? That is correct. Okay. Now, before the break, sir, I asked you about the very next several pictures. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is look at photographs 36. In other words, the one immediately after 35, where Furman is pointing at the glove, all the way through 43. Do you see those? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, isn't it a fact, sir, that when you took those photographs, the first eight photographs after Furman is pointing at the glove, that as to those eight photographs, you were not having any detective instruct you as to what to shoot, but you were simply relying on your own professional judgment. Isn't that a fact? Yes, I would say it's a fact because of the the sequence in these photographs, which is the way I shoot. Okay, thank you. Now, you said earlier to the jury that you were using uh, code of color print film, ASA 200, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, how many exposures are there in each roll that you use, sir? 36 exposures. Is that your standard practice? Uh, that is what I prefer. Okay. And on this night when you were at Bundy shooting, you were using rolls of 36? That is correct. Okay. Could you please tell the jury what is a contact print? A contact print would be a print of a negative, same size as the negative is. Okay. Now, if one wanted to, one could take the first 36 negatives, or the first 35 negatives, however many negatives are on the first roll of film, and print them, could they not? Yes, you could. And if you printed the first roll of film, then anyone who wanted to know what the sequence of photographs were would be able to ascertain that, would they not? That is correct. Mr. 
studio film. I just have to wait till he's. We see. I'm going to show it to the witness when. We see. Go. Sir, I'd ask you to, to take a look at Defendant's 1366 in evidence. And if you'd like, you can compare it to the photographs you have in your blue book. And the question I have for you, sir, first of all, is can you see the number? Oh, by the way, you mentioned that, the, that there's a counter which numbers each photograph. That's correct. When the roll of film is printed, do those numbers appear on each and every print? It depends what the, uh, what the background is on the negative. Okay. If the background is very light, they're quite often difficult to see. But, but other than the fact that it may be difficult to see, is it the procedure that that number that you use on the counter will appear in the print? It should be, yeah. Okay. And in fact, in that exhibit which I've shown you, do the numbers appear in the uh, lower right-hand corner? Yes, they do. And there are some that do not show. The ones that do not show, is that because the background is extremely light? Because the background is so light. Okay. But can you tell the number because of the um, print that is directly in front of it or directly before it? That's correct. I'm sorry. Directly before mm -hmm. it and directly after it? That's correct. Okay. And, sir, if you'd like to compare it to your album, please go right ahead. But the question I have for you is, does this sheet, except for the fact that the the images are slightly larger than they would be if it was a direct contact. Does this page reflect the sequence of photographs on the very first roll of film that you shot that night at Bundy? Yes, it does. And, sir, do the first, by the way, how many um, exposures, did you, exposures did you get out of that first roll? There would be uh, 36, 35, 36. Okay. And so sometimes when you're shooting a roll of 36, you only get 35? It depends on how the camera on its first on its first advance advances or depending on how far I have pushed the film into its position. Okay, so so it, I may run out at 36, and sometimes you might even get 37. In this particular roll, do you notice that the last shot on the roll is item number 35? Not item number, but photograph number 35? Yeah, I think it's, let me just check with this one. Certainly. Here. This contact sheet, except for the uh, uh, the fact that the actual negatives are slightly larger in, when they're printed there than they would be in a routine contact sheet, do they represent the first roll of film that you shot that night at Bundy? Yes, sir. And um, 
and the first 33 frames on that roll, those would be those overall shots you talked about that you, sh that you took between approximately, um, oh, 325 and say 355 in the morning? Whatever the time was, yes. Okay. And the last two shots uh, that appear on there, those would be the, the two shots that you took um, sometimes between um, 4.20 and 4.35 in the morning. Is that correct? Yes, you just the testimony. Sustained. First question. Sir, didn't you, didn't you say just before the break that the time that the photographs were taken of Detective Furman pointing at the glove given the times that you gave for the other events that evening, would be somewhere between 4.20 and 4.35 in the morning. The testimony. Didn't you say that, sir? Objection. The testimony. I probably did. I'm, um, I have practically no recollection as to the actual times involved. Sir, yesterday when you were interviewed by me, were you interviewed by me for approximately an hour and a half? That is correct. And would it be fair to say that the majority of that time, you were giving a narrative of what happened, the order it happened, and the times it happened on June 13th of 1994. Isn't that correct? That is correct. <sighs> May I publish it to the jury, Your Honor? Yes. What, I, I, why don't you ask him one more? Do you want to ask him a question about the uh, frame numbers? that appears in each picture? Okay. Aside from the number in the lower right-hand corner of the actual print, is there also a number beneath the print which indicates um, which frame it was or which shot it was in the roll? There's only one imprint on the negative. <laughs> there are no other numbers. Well, no. Are there numbers beneath each print there which tells you that this was, say, the third frame, or the fourth oh, frame, or the sixth frame? You mean the frame? ones that are put on by Kodak? Yes, the ones okay. that are put on by Kodak. Okay. Okay. And do those also appear on that sheet? That is correct. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Well, I, before, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before I photograph it, I would like to use the Elmo, and I think we have to cut the feed. Questions first. Sir, in the those establishment location overall shots, whatever you want to call it, those first 33 shots, in those 33 shots you use the flash? I use the flash on every photograph I okay. take. And the um, and in addition to the flash, there were um, street lights that to uh, some extent uh, or other artificial lights that were there that illuminated the scene as well. Is that correct? That is correct. And you can see the illumination given off by those other lights in these various prints, can you not? That is correct. And when you shot the two photographs of Detective Furman pointing at the glove, and for those two shots, you shot those with a flash, did you not? That is correct. what is frame 34 and 35 on your first roll of film. You see those two? Yes, sir. Okay. And by the way, all the other uh, photographs on that first roll, 1 through 33, those were all shot at nighttime. Isn't that correct? They were shot what? At nighttime. Yes, sir. And as to... 34, the 34th picture. Do you see that on the screen? Yes, sir. Is that Detective Furman pointing at the glove? That is Detective Furman. And in 35, is that also Detective Furman pointing at the glove? That is also Detective Furman. And those are the last two pictures you took on that first roll of film during the night at Bundy on June 13th, in the early morning hours of June 13th, 1994? That, that is correct. Oh, well. Well, at this time, I have no further questions. I'd like to publish this. I'd like to pass it to the jury. Take a look at it. Add it to juror number one, please. Add it to juror number one. Okay. 
All right, Mr. Newfeld, would you uh, retrieve 1366 from Deputy Long, please? Sure. All right, the record to reflect that each of the jurists has taken the opportunity to view Defense Exhibit 1366. Mr. Darden, you may cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Rokar, um, under LAPD policy, you are not required to record the exact time of each and every photograph you take, are you? No. Um, you did not keep a detailed photo log in this case. That is a log indicating the exact time in which you took each no, photograph. Sir. Any time that you might give us today as to when you took a, a particular photograph is an estimate on your part. Is that correct? That is correct. It's your best estimate. As good I can, as I can do after a year. Okay. After, after 15 months, actually. 15 months. Now, you have always uh, had some problem in, in trying to remember the exact time at which you took each of these photographs. Is that correct? Sorry, objection. Some facts not in evidence. So stay and rephrase the question. Isn't it true that you've always had some problem remembering the exact uh, time in which you took each of the photographs in this case? Objection. Oh, well. Considering I photograph an average of two to three homicides every night, I cannot remember the times. In fact, you were interviewed by an LAPD detective, LaFaw, on November 22, 1994, weren't you? Yes, I was. When you were interviewed by Detective LaFall, you told him that you arrived at Bundy shortly after midnight. Is that correct? Yes, I did. But later on, you looked at your own log and realized that you didn't get the call to go out to Bundy until 2.48 in the morning. Is that he right? He interviewed me by phone at my home. And um, I had, of course, very little recollection of what time, and I was obviously wrong in the statement I made. As you begin uh, to take photographs at a crime scene, you take a photograph of a... Uh... Or a slate. I'm sorry? We call it a slate. Okay, and, and is there a slate uh, depicted here in... Uh... 1366. Uh, 1366. Yes, number, number, the very first photograph. It's got my name up here, my serial numbers, and the, uh, what we call a C form for this particular job and the location of the job. Okay. And so this C form, or slate, is, is uh, exposure number, number zero. Number zero, yeah. Okay. And that slate indicates that you got the call at 248, correct? Yes, sir. And not only did you not arrive at the scene at uh, shortly after midnight, but in fact, you arrived at the scene at about 3.25 in the morning, is that so correct? Somewhere after 3 o'clock. Okay. You did sign in on the log, is that right? I did sign in on the log. But you've also had problems recalling the exact time in which you took these photographs because of your health, is that right? That is. Facts not in evidence. Facts not in evidence. Thank you. Sustained. It's false. Sustained. Are you having health problems? Yes, I do. Were you having health problems last year? Yes, I did. Congestive heart failure? That is correct. You also have a painful nerve disease? That is correct. You take uh, strike that. You've been, you have been prescribed approximately 13 medications that you take on a daily basis. Is that right? That is correct. Do they include Vicodin? Yes. What is that? Vicodin is a painkiller. You take one tablet or capsule every four hours? That is correct. Did you take uh, Vicodin yesterday when you spoke to Mr. Newfield? Uh, I carry about eight pills uh, on me when I go to work. Okay. Were you feeling well yesterday when you spoke to Mr. Newfield? I haven't really felt well for a long time. When you spoke to Detective LaFall in November, uh, we'll strike that. After you took the overall photographs, did you wait in your car for detectives? 
I waited. Um, I'm not sure whether I was sitting in my car or just leaning up against it. Okay. Do you recall telling Detective LaFall on November 22, 1994, <coughs> page two of that statement, uh, Mr. Newfell, that you had completed all of the overall photographs and was waiting in the vehicle, in your vehicle, for the detective's arrival? I remember getting a phone call from the date of the fall, but I, at this point, really don't remember what all was said. The bottom line is that you can't tell this jury at what time you took photos 34 and 35, is that correct? It's extremely... Some facts not in evidence. You can answer the question. You didn't look at your watch each and every time. Counsel, I don't think you finished answering. Oh, I'm question. sorry. Bottom line, sir, is that you can't tell this jury at what time you took photos 34 and 35. Is that correct? That is correct. You don't know. The only time recorded on my paperwork is when we leave the scene. Now, the contact sheet in front of you, uh, by looking at that contact sheet, you can tell the sequence in which the photographs were taken. Is that correct? That is assuming the uh, negatives were placed in the correct order. Um, the negatives are cut into strips, five negatives each. And uh, I'm not sure who made this uh, contact sheet. Um, if we go by the Kodak numbers, I would say they were in proper order. Okay. And you can also tell by looking at that contact sheet uh, that you received the call at 248, correct? Uh, that is correct. Okay. But you can't tell by looking at the contact sheet how much time elapsed between each photograph. Is that right? That is correct. I could not and tell. You can't tell by looking at that contact sheet the exact time it was when you took the last photograph on that particular roll, correct? No, I could not. And even though you have a counter, a photo counter uh, built into your camera, right? Right. That counter doesn't indicate the time in which you take a particular photograph either. That is correct, it does not. Uh, what you've done here today is, is you've testified to the best of your, your ability, is that correct? Yes, I'm trying to. Okay, you weren't trying to uh, Avoid answering questions by Mr. Neufeld. No, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Neufeld. Mr. Rokar, you said that you sometimes photograph as many as two or three homicides a night. That is correct. But on this particular night, this was the only homicide you handled, correct? That was the only homicide I handled. And in fact, um, this was an unusual homicide. There was a lot of... Um, Brass there, is that correct? That is correct. And that doesn't happen at, at, at most of the cases which you photograph, does it? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, when, when I interviewed you yesterday at the Los Angeles Police Department, sir, um, did we have a calm conversation? Yes, we did. I didn't raise my voice, did I? No, you were very nice. Okay, and during that hour and a half that we were talking, sir, did you at any time complain about your health? I felt there was no reason. Okay. To do so. Um, and, sir, you mentioned on cross-examination that you may not be, you know, absolutely certain as to what time a particular photograph or, or, or precisely what time a particular photograph was taken. Um, but would you agree, sir, that <clears throat> there is a difference between a photograph taken a half hour or an hour before sunrise and a photograph taken an hour and a half after the sun comes up, in terms of the light in the air. Light in the air? In terms of, I'm sorry, in, ter in terms of how light it is, that there is an obvious difference between a photograph taken um, an hour to an hour and a half before the sun rises and a photograph taken an hour to an hour and a half after the sun rises. Yes. Yes, there's a difference. And sir, if the sun rise that morning at 5.41 a.m., you would be able to tell the difference without being precise, 
whether that photograph was a nighttime shot, shot perhaps an hour, an hour and a half before sunrise, and one shot an hour and a half after sunrise, wouldn't you? I would like to think so. Thank you. Nothing further. Okay. Mr. Brokaw, how many uh, homicide scenes have you photographed since June 13, 1994? I am um, conservatively to do about 10 a month. So um, it's a couple of hundred at least. Thank you. One last question. Besides the fact that all the brass was there that night when you were shooting at Bundy, given the notoriety of this case in the... Sustain. During the intervening 14 months that Mr. Darden referred to, was this the most important case that you photographed? I would say so. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Darden? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wilcar, thank you very much, sir. You may step down. Mr. Newfeld, would you retrieve 1366, please? <laughs>